Thank you, Chairman Nadler, Chairman Cohen, Marking, Ranking Member Johnson, and members of the committee. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story with you today. In 1981, my mother scheduled to abort me at Mount Sinai Hospital in Hartford, Connecticut. She was pressured by my father to abort and rejected by a mentor in her church who told her she wasn't welcome anymore because she was pregnant out of wedlock. She met with a counselor at the hospital who assured her she was making the right decision, but didn't offer counsel on available alternatives. A black elderly janitor approached my mother after seeing her crying in the hospital hallway. She asked her if she wanted to have her baby. My mother said yes. She told her that God would give her the strength to have me. When she went to leave, my mother was called into the doctor's office, and she saw that he hadn't cleaned up the blood from the last abortion. She was disgusted and told him she wanted to keep me. He insisted that she go through with the abortion and said, you've already paid for this. You're just nervous. She repeated, I want my baby. And he yelled at her saying, don't leave this room. She felt his anger came from fear of losing her business and those that could possibly follow her. Yet with courage, she walked out. Children conceived less than a decade prior to my birth never experienced the threat of death through legalized abortion. It's easy for people to say, well, I'm glad your mother had a choice, but a statement like that devalues my existence and the reality of what that choice would have done to me. Human lives should not be weighed in the balance of whether or not they are wanted or measured in terms of circumstances or convenience. I deserved legal protection and a right to life. My mother's experience is similar to the experiences I've heard from women throughout this country. Women who face the same rejection, pressure, lack of counseling, lack of support, and disgusting facility conditions. My desire to assist women and children led me to work for years at a nonprofit pregnancy resource center. And there I witnessed the power of hope and the ways in which love and practical support can strengthen women and their families. Two years ago, I had a profound experience while visiting the National Museum of African American History. I was reminded of the ways black Americans were denied the right to equal protection and due process, treated as property and dehumanized because of the color of our skin. The museum memorialized the many ways black Americans have been unjustly targeted and killed for centuries. And while I rejoice over the progress that we've made as people of color, an ache remains in my heart because of the denial of equal protection and due process to another class of people, the baby in the womb. The sacrifices my ancestors suffered to achieve the civil rights I enjoy today are not able to protect future generations because of legalized abortion. I'm burdened that the 14th Amendment, which gave us liberty, was unjustly used to invent a supposed right to destroy a human life. Sojourner Truth in her day said, am I not a woman? And in mine I say, am I not a person? Abortion is not a victimless act. We just can't hear the voices of those who have been silenced and discarded. Roe v. Wade rendered 60 million lives unworthy of legal protection and has led to the deaths of 20 million black babies since 1973. In the dark history of Planned Parenthood, founder Margaret Sanger's philosophy in eugenics was recently documented by Supreme Court Justice Thomas in his concurring opinion about Fox versus Planned Parenthood. And today, an increasing number of black Americans recognize this eugenic population control philosophy that is having a genocidal impact. 78% of Planned Parenthood surgical facilities are located in black and Latino neighborhoods. And black women such as Cree Irwin, Lakeisha Wilson, and Tanya Reeves have lost their lives at the hand of an abortion industry that offered them substandard medical care. Others have left by ambulance, suffered botched procedures, and been left with physical and emotional scars, and were tired of the targeting and the lies that abortion is an answer to our challenges. As a pro-life feminist, I support bodily autonomy, but abortion impacts two bodies. I am a unique individual, and just as my heart is beating today, it was beating inside of my mother's body. I was not just a part of her body. And liberation never comes through oppressing other human beings. Roe v. Wade was built on lies that Norma McCorvey spent her entire life trying to correct. We can love both women and children and strive for a society that treats us all with the dignity we deserve, and this is true empowerment.